Thanks for staying with us. You're still tuned in to the Wake Up Nigeria show. Now it's time for some interesting conversation on women at empowerment and advocacy. With us here on the couch is Paul Thomas. He's the founder of Comfort Women Empowerment and Advocacy Foundation. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here on the show. With yes, ma'am. Now, um, I mean, um, women empowerment is, is um, very critical right. right now in the development of the nation and in the development of, you know, women generally. Right. Um, I mean, you have an NGO that caters to that right. and also focuses on um, domestic violence victims, women who have been through different abuses. Right. Now, let's talk more about what inspired, you know, the foundation. Okay, uh, first of all, my name is Paul Lakinyemi Thompson, the Thompson without a P. Uh, in 1965, a little girl was born, you know, and uh, she was from a very poor family. And the mom felt like she knew this man of God, this pastor, like, can you please watch after my daughter, you know? And uh, the men accepted, right? And when they got to, uh, like, my, my grandma and my mom over to this, this man. This pastor. And this pastor, yeah, <clears throat> a man of God, actually. He's a reverend, actually. And... Uh, when my mom was 12, he started molesting her. He started sleeping with her forcefully. And this little girl was, uh, this little girl was complaining, was telling people that this man abuses me, but nobody believed her, you know, for so long. And during the process, there, even though the man is, is married, he had about 10 wives, actually. And it, he kept doing it, he kept doing it. And when uh, my mom, the, the person, the, the little girl was complaining, this man took this little girl to another place so that he can have his will with her. So during the process, the, this little girl had a first child, uh, I think when she was uh, 16 or 17, and three years later, they had me. And we were made to believe that we are the reason for that. All of the family started calling us a slave, Omoeru, you know, and I had to grow up with that, you know. And uh, for 25 years, all of my life, I was struggling with like, self-esteem because I didn't really believe in myself. I actually wanted to commit suicide so many times. Wow. You know, because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And uh, I was so lucky, I traveled abroad. So when I traveled abroad, and even before I traveled abroad, one of these women made me to eat my own poop. Yes. Yeah, it was very, very sad. So crazy, like... So, but I was just lucky to travel abroad. You know, and when I traveled abroad, I, and I felt like... You know, when people were talking about their family, I, I can't really talk about mine, because there's nothing to talk about. One. Right. So, but I asked someone the courage, because... If, I, if that can happen to me or to someone like my mom, mm. imagine people that doesn't have a voice. So we came up with the idea to start a Comfort Empowerment, yes. an advocacy uh, foundation, whereby we're going to be educating people about advocacy, uh, advocating uh, empowerment and education. So that's the main idea behind it. How old is Comfort Empowerment? Well, uh, the idea started in 2009. Okay. But in 2014 or 15, we are... Uh, we registered the company, uh, the, the NGO okay. in Nigeria here. Okay. And ever since then, I usually come around to Nigeria. I do like uh, community outreach. Uh, so even sometime last week, we were in uh, somewhere called Agboyi in Ketu. You know, it was a very rural area. And mm. we were doing like trying to talk to women and the men too. You know. Okay, now, um, so far since 2009, I mean, you just recently came into Nigeria. Let's focus on Nigeria because we have a lot of women and young girls who are currently going through some sort of abuse or the other. How are you able to reach out to these girls? I mean, recently we heard of a case of um, Dr. Femi Olaleye. Yeah, I followed that abusing, case very closely. You know, this 16-year-old girl. Because, I mean, his case, his story is very similar to yours. I mean, right. The, girl, the young girl's story is very similar to your mom's. And then they're also, I mean, I've, you know, um, also advocated for, um, I have had outreaches at secondary schools where, you know, some of those girls are living with, you know, in families where they are being constantly molested. I don't, right. they don't know what to do. How do you reach out to these girls? How do they reach out to you to seek help, to seek solace, to seek comfort? Well, first of all, we have a program in our, in our foundation. Uh, it's called Anonymous Reporting. A lot of times, people don't feel comfortable coming out to talk about true. what happens to them. Very true. So with this, we are able to uh, connect with people on a personal level. We actually go around to uh, about community, uh, communi community uh, advocating. We do that a lot. We go to schools. We go to church. We go to mosque. You know, we talk to people about, about like, the danger of not speaking out. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, it happens by grooming. I was actually molested too as a kid. 
by my stepsister, you know. Wow. Yeah, and these are the things I had to grow up with, mm. you know, and I had to, like, I survived it, let me use that. So what, what we do most of the time, we, uh, we, we do something called a PSA, Public Service Announcement. Okay. We've been doing that. Okay. You know, we've been, like, empowering some women, but even though it's not on a larger scale. Mm. So uh, the goal is to do it on a bigger, in a bigger, you know, larger scale, whereby people are going to feel comfortable, because most of the time people don't feel comfortable to talk about domestic violence and sexual violence. You know, um, I know that over time, some of the challenges that a lot of foundations, NGOs as yours or as, yeah, um, are currently going through is um, sustainability, being able to sustain it. So you have, you do the outreach, you have people come to you. Right. But now it is finding a, a place of solace for them, a place of abode. Right. So for example, a domestic violence victims, a, a woman who's been through so much violence from her spouse, right. and she comes to your NGO yeah. for help. How do you constantly, how do you help to take her out of that space into a place where she feels safe? safe. Thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. Let me take you back just a few seconds, right? Uh, in 2000, uh, three years ago, I had a conversation with my mom. I said, why do you stay with this man? This man is abusing you, do all of these things to you. Why do you stay with him? And she told me that there's no way to go. So that gave me an idea to start something called uh, Shelter, a safe house. Mm -hmm. Even though we still on, uh, we are like 95% completed. Okay. So with that, it's going to be a temporary... Is this here in Nigeria? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I mean, everything we've been doing is here in Nigeria. Okay. So I usually come around just to advocate about what we do. Okay. So we're building a safe house, which is about 95% complete. Mm -hmm. You know, the goal of that place is to make sure that people can come, because most of the time when you tell people to leave where, where they are, uh, when someone is abusing them, they don't have a place to go. Yes. And it's very, very sad. Yes, even for a lot of young girls. Right, so that's the idea of the safer. And I believe the uh, legal state government, yes. the DSVR team, it is, yes. they actually create something like that too, mm. which is very, very amazing. Yes. And I believe that it can even improve on that, mm. you know. So that's uh, the idea of the safe house. Thank you so much, Paul. This has been very, a um, very, 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 very insightful conversation. I'm sure someone watching right now who's going through any sort of violence or, or, or whatnot, you can always reach out to the Comfort um, Women Empowerment and Advocacy Foundation. You can most importantly also reach out to domestic violence, domestic and sexual violence response team. See. All you just need to do is Google them up, check them out there, their contact numbers, their address, all the information that you need is available to you. Thank you so much for what Thank you're you, doing. We'll have to go on a quick break now. The show continues shortly. Stay with us. Thank you.